Maths fans, welcome to day two of the 2021 HLF and the second daily news show where we'll be looking ahead at what we've got in store for you today. Now, I say ahead, of course, today has already started. We had some fantastic laureate group sessions taking place about an hour or so ago, and I was actually moderating the one with Professor uh, Shigafumi Mori, and we had a really fantastic discussion, thanks to a brilliant question from one of the young researchers, which asked, what would we all be if we weren't mathematicians? So that is a great conversation starter that you can all borrow later on during the networking sessions. And just in case you are interested, Professor Mori said he would have been a mathematician. <laughs> there was no other option. Uh, and I said I would have been a professional footballer. But I think that ship has long since sailed. Now, in terms of the actual events taking place today, we have the um, hot topic session on disease modeling. More on that in just a moment. Um, as well as a couple of fantastic laureate discussions. So the first one will be between the new 2020 ACM Turing Award recipients. So that will be Alfred Aho and Jeffrey Ullman. And they'll be in discussion with the 1986 Turing Award recipient, Bob Tarjan. We've also got more laureate group sessions, so you're probably fed up of me saying this, but there are only 10 spaces. It's an amazing opportunity to have a chat with these incredible minds, so do sign up for those. And then the second laureate dialogue will be between Wit Diffie and Leslie Lamport, who are actually both on site here in Heidelberg, so they'll be next door in the big fancy studio. Uh, and that is bound to be a lot of fun. So my last experience with Wit was actually at the 2019 um, HLF, where he kind of stormed the stage during my closing ceremony. Uh, so I can guarantee that one will be a very entertaining uh, discussion. Now, as I mentioned, we have the Hot Topic session today, which is looking at the science of epidemic modeling. And here to tell us more with me in the studio is Amrish Baiju. Hey Welcome, there. Amrish. And he, Amrish is from Doctors Without Borders and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So qu yep. quite the CV, I think. <laughs> I'm very impressed. So can we have a little bit of a taster of what you're going to be discussing later today? Yeah, well, I, I think we have a, a really nice group of uh, panel speakers. And um, unfortunately, I'm the only non-mathematical modeler in there. Uh, but what I am is an epidemiologist, and, and to that extent, a field epidemiologist. And, and much of the work that we do at Doctors Without Borders is in the most acute uh, emergencies, in the most difficult places around the world. Um, and you know, we need data for that. Uh, we need data to make sense, to drive for operations, but also data as a fundament to tell the story to you know, the bigger audience of what's actually happening in many of these worlds. Mm. Um, so as an epidemiologist, my job is to make sense of that data um, and actually use that data to have an operational needs for advocacy needs, uh, you know, to speak with, with donors, with, with other partners, in the, with the media, for example. Um, and actually what I'm trying to do in this session or hope to do in, in my talk is actually bring things a little bit more back to reality. Right? We, we've heard a lot during this COVID pandemic about models and there are useful models, less useful models, and some during in the midst. But there are all kinds of conditions on, in terms of what feeds yes. models. Uh, and that's kind of what I want to talk about, because in all honestly speaking, uh, devil's advocate playing it here, uh, <laughs> the utility of m mathematical modeling, especially in my field of work in the humanitarian setting, has been limited. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that means that we don't need mathematical modelers or mathematicians in support. In fact, we need many people, we need many disciplines, we need to work more across disciplines, but we also need to have more honest conversations or how, how we can actually be more useful to each other. So mm -hmm. I hope that my talk will be a little bit of an intro towards you know, the discussion we'll have after the presentations of the other speakers as well to kind of see if we can get this uh, discussion in an honest way as science should be yeah. jump-started. Absolutely. I think that's exactly the idea of these panel discussions, like you say, is, is to have these potentially difficult conversations in a room full of mathematicians. <laughs> and you'll sort of say, well, you know, we really should learn from one another about, and as you say, have honest conversations about what actually is the right way of interpreting the data and yeah. the models. Yeah. So. Um, do you think, will the discussion be focused just on, on COVID? 
or will you bring in other examples? Or <laughs> Actually, I'll try not to focus on COVID. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is, I mean, this pandemic has been, of course, a global crisis, but under the layer of the pandemic or, you know, the spread of COVID itself, there have been many diseases which we, we managed to control here and there, which escalated as well. I'm talking about vaccine preventable diseases. I talk about malaria control programs. Um, so I kind of want to discuss a few examples. Uh, one example I'll, I'll quickly address is, is cholera. Mm -hmm. um, and another example is the use of you know, GIS imaging, satellite images, and kind of predicting uh, cholera outbreaks as well. Um, and I'll especially ask the question, okay, nice studies, nice papers published in good journals, but what was the benefit for us working in the field, trying to assist communities directly? Um, for unfortunately, yeah, maybe I'm telling too much about my talk. Well, <laughs> it, it's gonna be a little bit disappointing. But one of the things I also wanna focus on is especially tool support. Yeah, so I've been a big advocate of the use of R, for example, in epidemic mm -hmm. analysis. Why? You don't need a license, and R is incredibly powerful in, in ways that many of us epidemiologists don't understand it. We're still very much bound to programs like, you know, STATA, SPSS, SUS, mm -hmm. um, and there's a huge community behind that with support of many people that work in, uh, you know, the more exact academic scientists that develop packages that could be of great benefit to us, but we need it delivered in a certain way, right? The yes. steeping and learning curve for these advanced software suites is uh, quite steep. Mm -hmm. So I'll showcase some examples where that has worked, where we actually brought different people together with different skill sets to make it work. Brilliant. Right. Uh, well, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us, and I'll welcome. leave you to prepare for your discussion. <laughs> no, it sounds like you already know what you're going to talk about, which is perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank okay. you. Thank Thanks. you, Average. Um, now, yesterday, I introduced the idea of, of big questions I'm going to be posing on each one of these shows to start the day off. Um, and w yesterday we looked at, is maths invented or discovered? And today's question, uh, which will hopefully now appear for you, is, is computer science a sub-discipline within mathematics? Now, I'm hopefully, I'm sure this is going to generate a lot of debate. I am not in any way <laughs> saying whether it is or isn't. That's for you to decide, for you to vote, and for you to discuss with the other young researchers. And we'll reveal the results in a couple of minutes. But before we do that, I have another guest joining me in the studio. We're full of guests this morning. <laughs> uh, so this is the yoga instructor, Andrea, who will be running the warm-up session following this news show. So uh, I thought it'd be great if Andrea came in and got me to do a few poses. So you could all basically have a bit of a laugh at how much I can't do yoga. So <laughs> Andrea, please, I'm going to stand slightly to the side so you can all hopefully see me. OK. Yes. OK, so weight on my left leg. Yep. Put on the ankle or how flexible you are, a little bit higher. Okay. Excellent. I've, I've probably got too high already, yeah. but I'm going to go with it. Okay, okay yep. it's in cause of the teens otherwise. Yeah. And now <laughs> you can be a complete tree by rising up your arms. Yep. Hold your balance, be strong. Okay. Be yep. grounded and on the top, very flexible, like in your show. <laughs> this is... Take it's, that. It's, I can feel it a little bit in my sort of core, <laughs> to be honest, like, like with course. the balancing. Yes. Uh, this is you good. can do that every morning, just for a small check, how is your balance? Yeah. <laughs> is there anything I'm meant to be doing with my breathing, or am I just kind of, of course. trying to be as relaxed with as possible? With every inhaling, you can get a little bit bigger and grand back the tree, and if with every exhaling, you can a little bit relax. I'm, yeah. I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> I'm really so relaxed. <laughs> this is amazing. It's this not a brilliant. cool down, it's a okay. wake up. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes, I think yeah, I better wonderful. have that. I'm going to fight for that. That was lovely. Very nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> so you've got that to look forward to, everybody. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so Andrea, as I said, we were doing the yoga session immediately following uh, the conclusion of this show. Uh, and that pretty much does bring us to the end. So let's just have a quick look at those poll results. So do we think computer science is a sub-discipline of maths? I, I kind of thought it would go this way. Most of you, we've got two thirds of you saying no, and a third of you saying yes. So of course, the most interesting thing about all of these questions I'll be posing is why did you pick a particular option? So again, you know, feel free to use them as conversation prompts uh, during your meetings across the rest of the day. And finally, a throw forward to the recap show, which again will be happening at the end of today's scientific program. I'll be back. And 
If you share any tweets or photos during the day, hashtag HLF21. And again, I will pick out my favorites, and you'll be featured on the show. So have a great day, and I'll see you all soon.